And this was quite interesting for me to see that really the habit of the arc known from atmosphere just playing around with it is really different when you lower the pressure so it gets to a, the arc gets diffuser and wider and less bright and when you turn down the pressure further it becomes almost to a really cloudy effect that has different nice glows and shadows and, and dark zones in between and even makes some funny patterns sometimes. Hello, disclaimer here. There's something I have to tell you before we can begin. The information provided by Tamey Lightning is designed to provide helpful information and to educate on the subjects discussed. That being said, the information provided is true and complete to the best of our knowledge and is not intended to be used without professional guidance or supervision. All recommendations are made in good faith by both Tamey Lightning and affiliates, to which we disclaim any liability in connection with the use of the information we provide. Thus, we ask that you be safe, be informed, and ask questions. Let's get right to it. Welcome back or welcome to the Taming Lightning Podcast. I'm Percy Eccles II. I'm the creator and host of Taming Lightning, as well as the Emerging Plasma Tech at Pittsburgh Glass Center. Taming Lightning Podcast features a series of conversations to help expand our understanding of plasma and neon light, looking beyond its associations with novelty and sign making, and to explore the potential for noble gases as an artistic medium. Hello, Lightning Tamers. This is episode number 34. In today's podcast, we have a recording from 2019 during the Plasma with Blown Glass workshop taught at the Glass Factory in Boda, Sweden. I was invited to teach alongside Ed Kirshner and Jaime Guerrero, which was only made possible by the 2019 Advancing Black Arts in Pittsburgh grant. Now, I wasn't sure if I was going to release this episode, but seeing that we are halfway through the collaboration with Geeks for the Intro to Plasma series, Today's guest would be an opportunity to emphasize the need to have a growing respect and understanding of the components, knowledge, and skills as introduced in Chapter 2, besides showing another perspective on learning plasma from an engineering and technical background. Now, the person I'm introducing is Tristan August. He works for Constructive in Berlin. Constructive is a product manufacturing and rapid prototyping solution. With Tristan as their expert in creative solutions, electronics, manufacturing, and hardware hacks. Perhaps he and Dalibor Farney are kindred spirits. Among the participants in the workshop, Tristan was most familiar with plasma, yet he did not have any glass blowing experience. Now, this wasn't a problem since he was able to pick up on the glass blowing jargon and work with other participants to have his vessels made, much like Ed himself. With his technical understanding, he brought with him a plasma transformer he had designed and a few experiments he had made with glass tubing. In any case, I hope you enjoy the last podcast of 2020, so let's jump right in. It's been four days in now, and uh, I'm really impressed with uh, Tristan's resume, but also uh, the curiosity coming from a research uh, and scientific background rather than coming from an artistic glass blowing background. He's been really helpful in the class thus far, and so I'd like to welcome Tristan here on the podcast today. Hi. Um, can you kind of tell us a little bit about your background? Well, I'm, I'm kind of like a self-made man. That is, I haven't, haven't studied at university or so, so I've, I've played since I can think around with electronics, and my dad just, just left, over, left, left me a solder iron and some... To tools. So I, I was, whenever I saw something on on the street, some old TV or some I don't know, DVD player wasn't available there, but but uh, video recorder or stuff like this, I, I just took them apart and and learned basically all myself from from what's in there. Why why doesn't transistors have three legs and and all this stuff? And then I figured out it's 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 really amazing and interesting and, and kind of like an endless topic to to discover electronics and way how things are built and made and so I got really into like mechanics electronics and this is actually where I 
yeah, did, did like serious hobby work on all the time um, besides school and stuff like this. So even at, at school, when, when we had physic, um, after we, we talked about the triad, like the electron tube triad, um, in the break afterwards, I went to my to my teacher and said, "Do you have some electrodes, like like some some electron tubes around?" And he said, "Yeah, we just got a bunch donated from from a father of a child in the school." And and I said, "Well, can I play around with one?" And and I built my first uh, radio transmitter with a um, electron tube just just in the break after having the lesson. Um, I was pretty excited about like, oh, that works pretty well. So. Um, I forgot about transistors a bit and got into electron tubes and, and played around with them. Got some serious shocks from the high voltage I used. And um, yes, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I learned a lot. And I always saw it from a childish, playful perspective. So it was not like really for a special purpose. It was just for having fun with it. Mm -hmm. And then... Over actually a babysitter connection, I, I met my my last boss, and and she said, well, since you fixed all the stuff in our house, like the broken dishwasher and the broken blown up microwave and whatever, um, can you also develop a, a complex medical device for us? And I said, well, it sounds like a big challenge, but I will try. So <laughs> divide and conquer. I said it's it's always possible to break down things in tiny subsections and and figure these out and then bring it all together. Mm -hmm. So I started working at, at her company and um, yeah, basically did some some proper research and, and really like basic research and then developed a whole new medical um, cancer diagnosis uh, machine for them. Um, so it was treating tissue probes on, on slides and mm -hmm. stuff like this. And um, we ended up being a team of five people working there um, in the development, in the R&D. And for a good six years I was working there. And, and afterwards I figured out with a good partner of mine that I knew from school already. Um, he was at this company responsible for the CAD construction of all the 3D parts that we designed and and got made externally and, and internally as well. We had a CNC mill. Um, then we figured out, well, medical stuff is nice, but it's al already getting a bit boring because it's so one-handed. Mm -hmm. And so we've, we figured out we will make our own company, and that's what I'm doing now for six and a half years with him together in Berlin. And, yeah, so we're running actually a, a proper equipped workshop and having a team of seven people at the moment where we design, concept, um, prototypes and, and solutions for different, very different topics like medical, university research stuff, uh, bigger companies that just need more brain power on designing some new skills or new stuff, um, actually training and teaching people, coaching young startups that, that need help for some reason, um, don't have enough experience in specific topics and, and so we yeah, we, we are into all this and we usually build prototypes in our workshop that go then to the customer and they evolve and, and iterate on this and feed it back to us and say, well, we need more this and that and then, then it's fine. And since we come to, a, uh, when we come up to a, to a like ready product state, we make it, um, we hand it over probably to a professional producer that is capable of producing high quantities. Mm -hmm. Um, there's one thing we don't do because we are too expensive for production, for, for real pr serious production, mm. and we don't have the facilities for this. So we are really like more the brain guys who, who really create the new things and thoughts and, and techniques. And once it's running and, and doing well and, and it's proven that it's working and reliable, then we hand it over to a company. And the name of the company that you work Const with? Constructive-Berlin.de. So constructive. Yeah. yeah. And you, does your education background feed into this, or is that completely yes. different? Yes, it. Uh, I I did a training in um, metallurgist, so I, which is basically a, a job where you, um, when you work as a metallurgist, you basically quality control or research or validate some incomes and outcomes of big factories like 
car industry, for example, if they do some molding some parts, like like deep drawing some sheet metal, they need to make sure that's the right metal, the right alloy, the right tempered, like, like annealed situation and so on. So you control this mm -hmm. by taking samples, looking under on, on the microscope to the crystal structure that can tell you a lot about the habit, the, the properties of the material. And this is what I learned actually. Um, we also digged a bit into ceramics and plastics, but mainly metal. Um, so all sorts of alloys like steel based, copper based, even like, like uh, high scientific use like, like for um, turbine blades in, in big uh, jet turbine engines, um, the nickel based alloys and stuff like this. So we, we worked through all this and it's always good at my work to, to have a deep background where I can sometimes just pick a decision and say, for this and this purpose, we need a special aluminum alloy that's not on the market yet, mm. or we need to, it's totally fine to work with the standard whatever. And uh, so you have a deep-seated interest in plasma, and where does that come from, and what is it about plasma that interests you? Um, it's a bit hard to remember when it really started, but I have a good good clear image of me sitting as a probably 15 year old teen sitting in my messy room with all this stuff laying around like Technic and, and electronic stuff ripped apart and stuff like this. Um, and I played around with actually a decoration bowl, like half a head size I would say, um, from made out of plastic and I sealed it with some hot glue on on the rim where it's on the equator where it's taking apart and I melted two injection needles into it and hooked up some high voltage and sucked out some air with an airbrush compressor that was just laying around um, out of one of the needles. Um, so this was actually my first really playing around with gas discharges in lower pressure than atmosphere. So before I had drawn some arcs in the atmosphere, just, just with some high voltage sources. Um, and this was quite interesting for me to see that really the habit of the arc known from atmosphere, just playing around with it, is really different when you lower the pressure. So it gets to a, the arc gets diffuser and wider and less bright and less noisy, less everything. Um, and when you turn down the pressure further, it, it becomes almost to a really cloudy effect that has different nice glows and shadows and, and dark zones in between and even makes some funny patterns sometimes. And this actually grabbed my attention quite a lot to, to see what's going on there, to try to understand it from a, from a physical and, and mechanical perspective, but also just playing around and glimpsing at these beautiful things going on in, in some enclosed evacuated containers. And this would be a good time to take a quick break. So Tristan just said something interesting about the plasma arc, which we defined in chapter two, taking shape of the intro to plasma series. And the thing about the relationship between pressures and gas behaviors, well, we'll be discussing that in chapter three, chemistry and collaboration. Wait, you haven't heard about the intro to plasma series? Well, let me have Emily from Geeks tell you all about it. Geeks and Taming Lightning are making a four-part episode series that's functionally a survey or lecture in podcast format. Percy has produced Taming Lightning for three years with 30 episodes released. Percy has a full-time job in the hotel industry and uses his spare time to generate this content. In a few episodes, he literally goes the extra mile and travels to provide a personal touch to the conversation. Geeks believes the Glass community is incredibly lucky to have this resource, and it's our goal to replace that luck with financial support. We have an initial goal of raising $2,800 to support this four-episode series. That translates down to 100 listeners chipping in $7 each per episode. We hope that you'll support Percy's expertise and help us establish precedent by compensating valued voices in the field. Every donation really counts. 
we have a link in the show notes to get started. If you're on a computer, click the donation button on our Taming Lightning page. If you're listening on the go, send a Venmo donation to at Geeks Glass with the word plasma. That's P-L-A-S-M-A. Thanks in advance for your support. Thank you, Emily. Please check out the Intro to Plasma series on YouTube, leave a comment and like, and now back to our podcast. And then you saw this opportunity here at the Glass Factory Boda. What were your expectations coming in and what have you learned so far on the fourth day? Um, I've, I've done quite a bit of plasma in, in my company actually for, for basically for entertainment. I've done plasma um, in bigger glass vessels and also like proper like one meter tall um, medical glass cylinders that are used for I don't know what. Um, even the chiller that is double walled and played around with this. Um, so I had more experience gathered in, in plasma, um, DC and AC excited plasma, so with electrodes or without an electrode. Um, and coming to this workshop to Boda, I actually, I actually expected not being the, the most experienced in plasma and how to excite and which gas mixtures do what and what. Because usually when, when I met people that are interested in it or so, they kind of like newcomers to the topic, so it, it ends up always me explaining them what what happened there on a like physic level and, and how how do what affects which appearance and, and what is the pressure and the gas mixture does to it. Um, but since I haven't spent much money on this topic, I haven't had any precious gases like xenon or neon. Um, I, I only had like argon from the welding bottle from a welder and I had some nitrogen also in a bottle and just air and that was basically it, what mm. I was playing around with. So I actually saw this opportunity to really get into this like normally used in, in proper plasma works um, gases that I haven't had access to because I, I just couldn't afford like spending a couple of hundred euro just for playing around with it. Mm-hmm. Um, because I don't do it for real purpose, it somehow brings value back. So mm-hmm. therefore, I, it would have been just play. And yeah, sometimes I'm I'm a bit yeah short on on money spent just just for something that's nice. Mm-hmm. Yeah, which is great because now you're you've come to this space. You got to see how those different gases. And we have a plethora of gases available to us, which was not available during my class. That not, well, it's not my class, my, the class that I brought to the Pittsburgh Glass Center with Ed Kirshner and Jaime. Um, we were using neon, argon, krypton, xenon, nitrogen, and we also have helium available. Um, and seeing those mix, seeing the mixtures thus far, and as we kind of shift into new mixtures, um, are you kind of thinking about setting aside some money to to invest in these other gases? Yes, I'm actually looking forward to to try to get in contact with some plasma and or neon guys back to Berlin or Germany mm-hmm. and try to figure out if they have some of these gases and let me play around with it for a while and, and I can just give them the money for the gas I used mm-hmm. or if they are short on some gases that are interesting for me as well and just say, okay, let's get another bottle, bottle of it and, and let's play, play around together with it. Mm-hmm. Um, I definitely think this will happen, and I also definitely think it's it's since I haven't had much contact with this art scene at at all. I mean, we have worked for artists with our company like seriously, but um, I haven't had so much contact, for example, with glass blowing and glass making and 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 doing all sorts of different nice sculptures being afterwards evacuated and filled with proper gases and lit up mm-hmm. in a plasma way. Um, I think I'm. I can easily help people doing this for their getting started point. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, w- I would probably not not build my own manifold and do all this costly equipment set set up just just for play around with it. But it, it might be ending up that I don't know. Somebody comes and and says, "Well, I I always wanted to do this, so can you help me doing this?" And then then I can kind of like work together. And he's he's in charge for for. Yeah, getting getting all the gases, and I'm in charge for for building, gathering the parts for the manifold and, and building the manifold, for example. 
in addition to that, you've also been working with building your own transformers, and uh, you're fairly comfortable with doing that. Yeah. Is there anything that you can kind of say about that that may be interesting for people to hear? Well, I've I've always played around with like visible electronics, so to say. So LEDs, lasers, high voltage where you see an arc or something that gives you a direct feedback if it works or not. Um, I remember these days when we were in, in school still, we, we played around with building radio transmitters um, to get kind of like a pirate radio running with a really low power just, just, to, just to prove that we did it. Mm -hmm. And it was having not proper high frequency measurement equipment and so on, it, it turned out to be completely almost impossible to prove that you succeed or not because mm -hmm. you, you, you tune around and hear something cracking in the radio and you don't know if it's your transmitter or just some, some other sparks going around somewhere. Yeah. And it kind of like ended up being really frustrating because it's kind of like a way where you, where you build something after drawing in a book or after a circuit that you got from somewhere. Um, and you can't say if it works or not. It's kind of like really frustrating. With the plasma, with the arc, with the LED, with the laser, you always see like, oh, that's bright, that's cool. Or with the laser, oh, it's on, better put your safety goggles on because it's, it's laser, so it's serious. Mm -hmm. um, and even with a high voltage arc, I mean, playing around with this, it's, sometimes it's dangerous if you have low frequency or DC. Um, but being aware of this danger makes you also like excited about, okay, this is dangerous, but I can still handle it. I can play around with it if I have like big isolation gloves on or if I have like a long plastic rod where I just touch the electrodes instead of doing my finger or tweezers or whatever. Um, and, and also being excited by this high voltage, high frequency going on, which doesn't zap you if you touch it. Mm -hmm. it, it gives you some tickly feeling and it burns your finger actually if you get a really arc going from your fingertip or to your fingertip. Um, but again, it, it won't kill you and it won't shock you as, an, as a teaser would do, mm -hmm. which is at DC or low frequency. You really get serious hurt from it. But this is just, oh, I, I touch it on the wrong side, so better don't do again. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I like this. And therefore, I'm, I'm actually, because I have so much experience playing around with it also and building my own transformers and, and thinking about some efficient circuitry that doesn't use that much expensive components, but also makes a good, proper, steady going um, transformer running for plasma or for light arcs or whatever. Um, I'm thinking of building an own transformer actually that is adjustable in the power and easy to handle and safe because you can just put it in, a, in any 12 volt wall plug that you can get in any country so you don't have to bother around with this mm. 110 and 220 voltage problem that we have with the transformer that you just brought, which is great, but on the other hand, like other people would probably need to yeah, need to get another step-down transformer, and that kind of like makes them headache if they're not into electronics, I guess. Yeah. Um, is there something that uh, from so far working in the workshop that you think we may want to add to our tool set as plasma uh, artists or glass blowers working towards working in plasma? Like we've just discussed a couple of hours ago, I think it's pretty interesting to get into different waveforms that the transformer puts out. I mean, a proper sign is something that is good for steady and, and calm plasma, I say, but to modulate it in, in a way that you get like really short intervals of high power, but, but then have a break in between or so, could also make like a really different effect to the plasma that you used to see, even with the same vessel that you did, um, could, could look completely different. And also, if you, if you play around with the frequency that it's excited of. Like, usually we work something, let's say, up to 50 kilohertz, like 20 to 50 kilohertz. But seeing it at 5 kilohertz, even if it's an audible frequency, which could be quite annoying, but yeah. again, saying, if it looks completely different and you hear what's happening there, it could be also somehow interesting for a piece of art. And also going to really high frequencies. And you need to be careful because you start to transmit radio waves which can disturb other things. And in some countries, some wave, some frequencies are strictly forbidden to emit. Um, you need to take care of this. But if you take care of this and, and choose a frequency that is free, it probably might be able to, even in the megahertz frequency range, to, to excite something that even glows in completely different. 
Well, I appreciate you taking the time out of the workshop to talk with me on the podcast. It was definitely, definitely interesting meeting you, and I hope that we have a future contact in regards to this uh, with the Plasma R Alliance and, and as well as Ed Kirshner, who's definitely taken a liking to you. So uh, thank you again. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you for listening to the Taming Lightning Podcast. Music credits to the following artists. In the preview, Retro by One, that's O-N-E. The opening is Boost by Joaquin Carud. The intermission, Sunny Side by One. And the credits, The Process by Leahy Inspired. I hope you enjoy the last episode of 2020. To close out, I want to bring up that in the recent committee meeting for the Plasma Art Alliance, Tristan's name has come up quite a few times. Since meeting him in Sweden, Ed Kirshner has connected him with another committee member, Anders Mikkelsen, whose technical expertise and apprenticeship under Mundy Hepburn has been developing both plasma transformers or inverters alongside honing his class blowing ability. No matter what the next year brings, I want to be able to show more of the plasma process, but before that happens, I have to get my manifold in running condition get a few extra hands, and learn a few new tricks. I'd like to thank the Pittsburgh Glass Center for hosting the residency for the 2019 Advancing Black Arts in Pittsburgh grant, and for supporting me as a place of research and inspiration. The Plasma Art Alliance, where I have an access to a well of knowledge, and connects me to some amazing and supportive people. Of those, I'd like to mention a few, such as Ed Kirshner for providing the opportunity to learn and teach with him in Sweden and Ben Orozco for his help in making that all possible as our vanguard, and for his help as the co-host for the Intro to Plasma series. Lastly, all this would not have been possible without the support of Black Arts and Pittsburgh grant funded by the Pittsburgh Foundation and the Hines Endowments. If you'd like to support Taming Lightning, please donate to the Taming Lightning Geeks Intro to Plasma series. You can find all current episodes and information at geeks.glass. That's G double E X dot glass. Should money be a bit tight this time, please check out the Intro to Plasma series on YouTube and leave a comment about what you find useful and questions about what you like to hear from the current or future chapters. I'll have links provided in the show notes. Please share, comment, and subscribe. And as always, be safe, be healthy, and be strong. And I'll see you next year.